Hey everyone, Dave Durante with Power Monkey Fitness here with another movement video for you. Today we're going to be talking about the pullover. So the pullover is another movement within the gymnastics world that's a fairly simple movement, something that we might learn when we're fairly young, but I never want you to equate a basic level movement and thinking that it's easy. All right, it can still take a lot of steps, a lot of progressions to make sure that we're learning it technically sound. So we're going to go through a few progressions to make sure we have everything in place. The first one here is going to be a very, very basic one, something that we can actually utilize thinking about more as a core drill than something that will eventually translate to what we're going to be doing with the actual pullover. You're going to hang from the bar and just going to do a tuck raise, knees deep into chest. It's going to be something you might do for hip flexor and core related movement, but we're going to be thinking about it as the lower half movement for our eventual pullover. The way we're going to be doing it is thinking about having a nice full grip over the bar, bar sitting right in the midpoint of that palm, thumbs wrapped around as well on any of our bar hanging movements. And we're going to try to keep the shoulder angle open as close to 180 degrees as possible, thinking about bringing the knees into the chest only a lower half base movement. I don't want too much lat activation. I don't want you to be pulling down on the bar. Thinking about bringing the knees in, the repetition, the protocols I'm doing here is gonna be a five second hold, a few reps at a time. You can be working up to 10 and even 20 second holds if you feel like you wanna be working on getting those hip flexors and those abs stronger for this knee into chest position. So the second variation here is gonna be building off of our tuck variation we saw in the first one but now with straight legs. So it's gonna be much more challenging, but it's gonna be a good stepping stone to what we eventually always talk about, highest level version of this movement. So we're gonna be doing a strict toes to bar with a hold. So if you are limited in hamstring and lower back mobility here, there probably will be some knee bending as you get those ankles close to the bar. That's okay, do the best you can. And I also wanna to try to see a nice open shoulder angle as well. So if you are closing down and getting those lats involved, try to limit that as best as possible and think more of a compression. When we talk about compression, the idea being let's try to get the legs as close to the torso as possible. Same protocol that we saw with numbers on the tuck variation. See if you can do a five second hold, a 10, maybe building towards a 20 second hold, few reps, few rounds per week. It's gonna go a long way in building towards our highest level variation for that pullover. Step three here is understanding that the upper half and lower half need to be working together. So we segmented out the lower half for the first two drills, and now we're gonna be building in the pull component with the lower half being involved. So you're gonna be doing a strict pull up, but I first want to initiate that tuck into chest before you initiate the pull. These body parts and these segments need to be working together if you want the pullover to be done in unison as efficient as possible. Idea being here, knees are gonna initiate from the ground up, knees into chest, initiating a pull, the pulls you're seeing in the video are pretty high. I'm thinking about pulling always to peak position. So that's a kind of a, a global comment that you should use for any of your pull work that we really try to stress. It's not just about getting your chin over the bar as a completion for a standard with your pull up, but always trying to pull as high as you possibly can. In my case, I'm pulling more to chest to bar on each of my variations. Always try to pull to peak position because it's going to allow for a much more simplified variation once we actually engage the full turnover action. This next variation will probably be the biggest difference from a pulling variation that you've ever done because we're going to be adding an inversion component to your pull. So again, this is going to be building off the previous drill, knees into chest, pulling, but in staying, stay, instead of staying vertical with the torso, we're going to be turning over and thinking about getting our knees to react towards the ceiling. This is going to be a pull to an inversion. Key concept here is trying to think about bar path. Okay, bar path is a comment and a note and a cue that we hear endlessly in the Olympic weightlifting world. It's a cue that we wanna be thinking about in our bar work on the gymnastics side as well. As we pull, we wanna have a connection to the bar as much as possible, which again will facilitate a much faster and more efficient turnover once we complete the actual rotation. This particular movement, again, one single movement from the knees into chest into the pull, turning the body over, thinking about getting fully inverted with those knees pointed up towards the ceiling, maybe even a little turned over past the bar and then returning back to your starting point, trying to get a few in a row just so you can get some reps under your belt with the same movement pattern. A slight variation that you can do from that previous drill is yes, starting from the tuck, but then right at that end point when you're paused while you're inverted, shoot the legs to a straight position where those feet are going beyond the bar to help understand the direction that we're trying to create with the eventual pullover. It's very important to understand, one, that we always want to be working towards our higher level movements. You're going to hear me say that endlessly, so make sure you understand that I'm going to be repeating that comment quite a bit in all of our videos. But this particular slight variation is yes to understand 
some efficiency around that tuck position, smaller circle allowing for a faster rotation, but the eventual one with straight legs is one that we want to be working towards. So we'll tuck, kick the legs out to understand the direction of the legs, where they'll be going once we work towards that straight leg variation. So this particular setup is one that I find to be very important, a low bar in your gym. Now just as a general comment, the way we have it set up here, we took an Olympic barbell, we wrapped some bands around each of the J-hooks so we can secure that bar at any of the height that we need. But if you are a gym owner and you are a coach and you have the ability to have a nice big rig space and lower one of your bars, it's gonna get a lot of use if you know what to do with it. So as a general comment, you can set it up the way we did here if you do not have a low bar, but I would recommend trying to set one up because it will add a lot of value in terms of progressions that you can add into the equation for the everyday user. The way this particular drill is going to be, set it up right around chest height and be aware if there is another bar on the rig so you're not kicking it. We're only gonna be doing tuck variations here, but the movement pattern is key. We're trying to get reps under our belt using some momentum, some kick off the ground, so we can get the momentum to pull us through what we would normally use our strength to work through. So what we're trying to do here is use a low bar setup to work through some repetitions to get more comfortable with the movement pattern going all the way over on a pullover. One really important note here is we're showing it on the lower bar because we can get a little bit better visual on it, but it's the same thing that will happen when you do it on the high bar. It's what's happening with release and a re-grasp with my hands as I get my weight over the bar. There's a really important concept and I think sometimes people forget that there is a release and a re-grasp. It doesn't need to be too exaggerated, but as we go over the bar, as soon as I get my weight on top of the bar, I'm releasing and re-grasping so I can put my hand in a more comfortable position to be able to push down into support from. If you have a death grip on the bar, it's gonna be really challenging to be able to turn over and get comfortable because that bar will not have any movement within the hand. So there is a little bit of a release and a re-grasp whenever you're turning over. So here's the full variation. This is the tuck variation. Starting from hang, you're gonna pull the knees into the chest, bring the knees over the top, and stay in as tight of a ball as you possibly can. The goal here is about efficiency, which means, again, upper half and lower half working together. The knees will lead the charge. If you're in a tuck position, the knees will lead the direction that your torso will eventually follow. It's a very important concept because I want that to be reiterated because one of the most important and common errors that we see with a pullover is a disconnect between upper half and lower half once we're going through that transition point over the bar. What ends up happening is instead of the knees continuing to lead and the torso following, the knees might lead but then there's a separation between upper half and lower half into a significant arch and it's hard to complete the movement because your upper half and lower half are working in opposition. So what we want to be thinking about doing is keeping your eye line on your knees the entire time. Eye line as a focal point on your knees, we'll make sure that we're keeping the head in, chin down, and we'll facilitate a much more compact and easier turnover action into that support on top of the bar. The last variation that we're gonna show is a straight-legged pullover, very similar to what we saw with the tuck variation, but now the feet are gonna be straight, knees are gonna be locked out. Instead of thinking about leading with the knees, we're gonna be leading with the toes, and again, thinking about that directing where the torso is gonna be following. This will be something that will be a little bit higher level just because the variation means you're long, you have a longer lever with those legs straight. Maybe turning over will be a little bit slower rather than a tuck creating a faster turnover. It's still something I would want all athletes to work towards in terms of higher level variations. Something we want to be thinking about in terms of our skill development progress. Play around with the tuck, see if you can work towards a straight leg variation. Something that will have a lot of benefit in terms of our long term growth. Thanks everyone again for following another of our Power Monkey videos here. Hopefully you learned something new. Please like, subscribe, send in those messages so we can keep answering your questions as they come in.